what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be doing something a little different uh, instead of making an app or integrating a ui framework we're going to be learning a fundamental and that is how to parse json in swift so if you're not familiar json is a really really common standard for representing data and whenever we make an API call or want to hold some data, it's generally in the JSON format. So as you can imagine, parsing it to use it in our app is extremely important. Here we're on the Apple developer website that discusses Codable, which is an uh, interface and protocol that we're going to use to do this parsing. That said, make sure you smash that like button down below. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's begin by creating a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application and let's call this parsing JSON. Save it to our desktop and jump right in. So before we can see how to parse JSON, we sort of need JSON. So generally you would get it from an API call, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna create a .json file on our desktop and just drag it into the project. So to do that, let's open up terminal and let's cd to our desktop. And you wanna run the command touch example.json uh, of course, feel free to name your file whatever you'd like. Then I'm going to use Atom, which is a IDE, to open up this file. So Atom, example.json, feel free to open up the JSON file in whatever file editor or text editor rather that you'd like. And let's add some JSON. So the JSON needs a root curly brace like so, and we're going to have keys and values. So let's say we have some JSON that represents someone, uh, someone's person profile. So for example, it represents a person rather. So we're going to have a first name, John. We're going to have a last name and some other things as well. And this indentation is going to drive me nuts. So let's do these one at a time. That's two. And let's say they have an age, and we can say the age is, let's say 30, uh, is male, we can say is true, uh, we can say birth, month, actually let's say, uh, let's say country, and let's say United States, and I think that's good enough for now. Um, actually, the other thing, let me add one more thing, which will be handy in our example. And let's say uh, siblings, and siblings will be an array of, uh, let's say siblings is an array of just names. So let's say Brad, Joe, Brianna, and Kim. So we've got this JSON object here. We've got some keys, strings, integers, a Boolean, and then we also have an array. And this looks like it should be sufficient for our example. So let's save it. Hit Command Q to close this editor. And let me grab that text file from our desktop. And we're gonna drag it into the project like so. Make sure you've got this top checkbox checked to make sure it copies it to the project. And let's just click on it, make sure it looks good, which it does. And now let's talk about parsing it. So to basically parse any JSON, we wanna leverage that codable 
protocol that we looked at at the very beginning. But before we can parse it, we need to get the JSON into the form of data. In other words, bytes. So whenever you make an API call and you get, uh, you get a response from a remote website, a remote server, you'll get bytes back. Because we've included this JSON file from our desktop, we need to first get this file and then attempt to convert it to data. So let's do that in view did load right here. So first we want to get uh, the file name with, or the file with this name, which is example.json. So let me copy that, head back to the view controller. And the very first thing we're going to say is let path, rather guard let path equals bundle for type of self dot path. And we're going to say path for resource of type. So the resource is the file name and the type is the file extension, which is JSON. So this path actually will return the URL where this file resides. Let's not forget to put an else and a return here. And let me rename this to be JSON URL to be a little more sensible. Next, we want to convert uh, the file at this path to a string. So we're going to say guard let JSON string is string. And we're going to initialize string with contents of URL. And we want encoding. So pass in this uh, JSON URL. And the encoding will be string.encoding.utf8 is what you want. And again, let's put an else case and a return because this returns optional. And we've got a guard statement here, like so. And looks like we've got an error. Let's see what we did incorrectly. So this is complaining, cannot convert value of string to expected argument type of URL. And the reason this is complaining is this actually, I believe, is a string. So we want to convert this to a URL. So let's say URL and file URL with path. Paste in the path there. And let's see, looks like we still have an error. Let's see what else it's complaining about. Call can throw but is not marked with try. So we need to put a try optional in front of this. And now hopefully all our errors have gone away. Looks like we still have one more error. So let's keep going with this. Closure expression is unused. Let's see what this is talking about. Let's see, JSON URL. This should be guard. So let's spell this correctly. And now hopefully our errors have gone away. Looks like now we just have a warning that we're not using this JSON string constant that we've created. So I'll leave that part in the video where I myself make mistakes. I think it's helpful for you guys to see the steps to go through when debugging your own errors. So cool. Now we've got this JSON string and now we can use Codable to convert the JSON into a native Swift object. So what the heck does that mean? So basically we need to create a struct which conforms to Codable and that has properties to match the JSON in here. And we can basically then use a JSON decoder to allow Swift to automatically parse it for us. So we're gonna create a struct down here and let's call the struct person. And we're gonna say person is Codable and in here, we basically want to put all the keys and the type that we expect and make sure the case sensitivity for the key in JSON matches exactly what we're typing in here. Otherwise, the parsing will fail. So those are strings. This is an integer. This will be a Boolean, so a bool. And next up, we've got this, which is a string as well. And finally, we've got this, which is an array of strings. 
So cool. We've got all this. We can get rid of this. And let's see why this is complaining at us. Let's lowercase this T. And now all these errors should go away, hopefully. Looks like we also need to change this to be last name. And let me just double check that example JSON file to make sure that we also update this to be last name, otherwise we'll have an issue. And let's go back to the view controller. All right, cool. The other thing I'll mention actually before we move on is you can have custom types in Codable so long as that type conforms to encoding and decoding. It's a little out of scope for this uh, video, but we can definitely take a look at it in a follow-up. But anyways, now that we've got this struct down here, we can actually decode the JSON. And we're gonna start by creating a optional person, create a do catch block, and in the do, we're gonna say this person equals try use a json decoder and we're going to say decode now we need to pass in the type that swift should try to decode to which is person dot self and for the from like i mentioned we need data so if you ever used an api call you get data back but because we have this string here we're simply going to create a data object with this string dot utf8 and in the catch statement we can simply print out error occurred when uh, decoding now because this is optional we need to come down here before we can use it and unwrap it so let's say guard let results equals person return and finally Let's print out some things about this person. So we're going to say result dot first name dot last name age and let's also do their siblings. So basically once we run this app uh, we should see our print statements down here and it'll basically be taking our JSON parsing it into this native struct and we're going to be using it uh, to do these prints. And let me also put a print statement in here in case this fails we can say person is nil so there is no result so let's cross our fingers hit command r to build and run and once your app pops up in the simulator the console should automatically open up down here and there's our app and let's see, let's open up the bottom here. Looks like nothing here yet. Okay, there it goes, perfect. So basically we've got our printed out properties off of this struct. And of course we've got John, Smith, uh, 30, and then with the array of siblings. So if we go back to the example.json file, we've got John, Smith, 30, and our siblings array, which is an array of strings. So that's a very, very quick overview of how you would parse JSON. Like I said, this example uses a local file that we've created and dragged in. In a real world case, if you're using, let's say, Alamo Fire or URL session to fetch data from uh, a server, so like uh, api.something.com, that itself returns data. So you can pass in that data to this JSON decoder line directly and you don't need to do this uh, string UTF uh, jumping through hoop scenario. So that said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out a lot and I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new. Welcome to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video if you are new. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one.